First time living alone in my apartment, I was walking out to my car in heels to attend an evening church service. I heard this guy saying, Hey, hello, can you help me? I'm standing about 10 feet away and when I stop to observe, it's this man in a wheelchair. He has one sack of groceries in his lap and two on the ground beside him. He had on what looked like veteran attire and combat boots. But what stood out to me the most is I noticed how incredibly built and buff he was. Not just his arms, but his calves. The hairs on my arms and neck instantly stood up. I guess while silently observing him, he was waiting for me to walk up to him. I took a few steps back and shook my head. His immediate response was, I I'm not going to do anything to you. Can't you see I'm in a wheelchair? He then pointed to his door and said, L Look, I just need help putting the bags inside my door on the floor. That's all. I declined politely and began to walk away. The screaming and cursing and insults was what made me basically run to my car. Safe in my car with the doors locked, I couldn't shake that awful feeling off of me. Now fast forward to a couple of days later as I'm driving down the street headed home. Who do I see walking without a limp or a cane or without any visible disability? My heart dropped. I stayed in my apartment for a week, too scared to go out in case of any more encounters. And to this day, this strange encounter with this man still haunts me. When I was a child, I was nearly kidnapped three separate times. I only remember one of them, but my family has two other times that they say happened which I will briefly go over. One of these times was at a barrel racing competition in Camp Verde, Arizona. A lady picked me up as an infant and tried to run away with me, but my dad chased her and she put me down. Another time someone else tried to break into our car when my mom left me inside for a moment to drop the mail at the post office. Apparently even as a little kid I had the presence of mind to honk the horn until she came out and the guy left. Again, I don't remember these specific instances and you know as much as I do now. The one time I do remember I was a little bit older and my brother and his best friend were there too. My mom owned a restaurant and we would go to Costco to buy tons of wholesale food in one stop and she would bring us along mostly because she didn't want to pay a babysitter, but also because we were cheap labor and would load and unload the car in exchange for chicken fingers or Costco pizza. This time my brother and his friend and I opted to get paid up front and had Costco pizza while my mom went around the store and got everything on her list. We ate our food and before we went to look for our mom, went into the bathroom. There were three stalls and my brother and his friend were on the either side with me in between them. I think I was singing while I was sat on the toilet and didn't notice when someone else came in. I don't remember much about what he looked like other than he had a denim jacket and I think he had a skinny clean shaven face. I know this much because he looked under the stall door right at me. I was scared and stopped making noise, and my brother asked if I was okay, and the guy stopped looking at me and disappeared. Nothing happened for a minute, then suddenly the man's arms reached under and grabbed my pants which were around my ankles. He tried to drag me out under the door, but I screamed to put my hands under both sides of the stall, and my brother and his friend grabbed them and held on to me. I think my brother yelled at the guy and we were all screaming and they kept pulling me until the guy let go and we heard him run out of the bathroom. We tried to run out and get a look at him, but he was gone. When we told my mom, she went to the Costco people to see if they had surveillance tapes, but they said the police needed to be involved and warrants and stuff needed to be gotten, and we ended up just going home. It was one of the scariest things that's ever happened to me, and I think it still affects me today. I sleep with my bedroom door locked, and have nightmares about home intruders pretty often. This happened at the Costco in Flagstaff, Arizona, probably somewhere between 1999 and 2001, and I've always wondered if something else like it has ever happened in that area, or if someone was ever caught for kidnapping in that area around that time. 
I was hoping putting this on Reddit might stir something up. If it doesn't, though, I just hope we never meet again. Ron Erickson was weird, vulgar, and broken, like many men can be in the military. We knew he had a sordid past, and we knew his upbringing was strange to say the least. He seemed like a harmless man. My husband, Ben, went to the same post-boot camp school as this guy. He and a handful of the boys were bonded by these terrible conditions and even terrible higher-ups while attending the school. Ben married me while on leave. We'd been together a long time and known each other much longer than that. Eventually, we moved into an apartment together at his duty station in Southern California. It was wonderful. Ron would come around occasionally and spend weekends with Ben. Sometimes he even slept in our home on the sofa or on an air mattress in the living room. Eventually we moved to a larger house in the military base and Ron had to deploy to Japan. It was a long six months. Life went on normally without him. Friends came and went. This isn't unique. Eventually it was Ben's turn to deploy. It was hard to cope, but fine. We said our goodbyes and smooched and he was off to strengthen his sea legs for the next six months. When Ron came back to California, one week after Ben deployed, he wanted to pick up a box of his things from our home that we had tucked away for safekeeping for him. I was excited to see the familiar face. He picked up his things, shared small talk, and left. Nothing strange at all, honestly. Knowing he was back from his journey and many of his friends were deployed with Ben, I extended some kind and friendly words over Facebook Messenger occasionally, wishing him well and being polite. Unfortunately for both of us, he mistook my kindness as romantic gestures. One night at 2am, Ron called me via Facebook's calling feature. Concerned for him, I answered. I thought the worst. Had he become depressed? Maybe even thinking about taking his own life? I can't in good consciousness deny a listening ear to someone who maybe needed it, especially someone my husband is somewhat fond of. The conversation started somewhat normal, as normal as a strange unwarranted 2am call could be. He was loud, possibly drunk, and sounded desperate for conversation. He rambled on Fora while they admitted to me that, as a child, he had had a relationship with his young stepsister. He talked in a lot of circles, but a few statements that stood out to me were, I just can't trust myself around women, especially alone. I've always liked you. I think you're hot, and I remember the way you looked in your bikini at the beach. During this conversation, I should have hung up on him. I made several attempts to keep the content friendly and uplifting, assuming that he was having some sort of episode. It was all horrible and made me feel disgusting. He then told me he was near my house at another girl's house, I assume was some poor guy's awful cheating wife. He said she wasn't really anything to him and he wanted to come over to my house. He knew Ben was an ocean away and that I was alone in my house. I told him not to come and he hung up on me. I panicked and closed all of the first floor windows and doors, making sure that they were all locked. I turned off the lights as well. I took my dog and cat up to my bedroom and locked the door, wedging pieces of furniture into the door to create a barricade of sorts. He showed up. He walked around my house, pulled on the doors, calling my phone, messaging me horrible things. I screamed for him to leave both on the phone and through my upstairs window. It was a nightmare, realized. I could get in if I really wanted to, he messaged me, a clear threat in my opinion. I called the police and then I called my neighbor, a big navy doc who I feel that I owe my life to. After being chased off by Hunter, my neighbor, and having long talks with PMO, NCIS, and my neighbors, I received a protection order against Ron. I'm disappointed there wasn't any brig time for this idiot, but I'm pleased I have documented evidence in case he ever tries to contact me or my husband again. You really never know someone. Stay safe, friends, and exercise your right to bear arms if you so choose. I'm a French student doing a master's in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. I live alone in an apartment in a building where there are only students. 
I'm 22, enjoying life peacefully. To give you a bit of context, I live in a calm, good neighborhood. The only noises I'd hear are the tram or parties in the building since a lot of students are there. One night around 10 p.m., I hear a knock on my door. I live on the third floor, and to get to my front door, you have to open the main door, which needs a key. Then you need to open the door to my corridor with the same key. So people who want to come to my door must have the key, call me or ring at the door so I could open the doors for them from my apartment. Nothing of this happened. I just hear a knock on my door. I usually open the door without a second thought, whether it's my landlord or a neighbor asking for something. As he told you, I feel pretty safe in the building and I could also take care and defend myself in case anything happened. But this time, for some reason, I had a bad feeling about this. I didn't move at first. I thought the person would just leave. I finished my assignments. However, the knocking continued for 30 seconds. I said, Yeah? In English, the person knocking doesn't say anything. I say in English again, Who is it? The voice answers in English, It's Uber Eats which is weird because Dutch always speak in Dutch and I recognize the voices and accents of everyone on my floor who have the key to access the floor. So it wasn't a neighbor. It wasn't my landlord. It was somebody claiming to come from Uber Eats. But the issue is, I didn't order anything from Uber Eats that day. The voice was unfamiliar. In case it's a prank or a neighbor pulling a joke, it was also a deep voice, at least 40 and probably a smoker. I replied that, I didn't order anything. You must have it wrong. After a few seconds, the knocking continues and the same voice says, Pretty sure you did. I have an order under your name. I start panicking. I look around and pick up a knife in case he breaks the door because the knocking was getting a bit louder. I checked if my door is locked. It wasn't. I was literally 10 centimeters away from him, my front door was the only thing keeping him from me, and I'm glad it doesn't open from the outside. You need a key to open it even if it's not locked. I step back and ask again, What's the name? He seems to be thinking for a few seconds, then a final knock occurs. It was loud, and it translated some anger or frustration. Finally, I hear him going down the emergency stairs right next to my apartment. The steps were heavy, and the person was clearly in a hurry. I don't know what he wanted or what would have happened to me if I had opened the door as I usually do. I still haven't understood how he got through the two doors and why did he come specifically to the last apartment on the third floor? Did he try others before? I posted the post about it on the WhatsApp group we have in the building. No one saw anything suspicious so no one opened the door for anyone. Either way, I'm lucky for my instinct telling me not to open the door and I'm glad. I listened. To give some context, every summer I would do some temp work for the company where my dad worked. It was an education company, so they always needed temp workers around in July and August time for all of the exam remarks that they had come in. It was my data entry work, but it suited me fine and it meant I could earn a little extra cash while I was at university. I did this every summer from when I was 19 through to when I was 23, and then I got another job at the same company for a bit after I graduated, but we'll get to that later. For now, all you need to know is that I was a reasonably familiar face there and everyone knew I was my dad's daughter. The main downside of working there was that I'd clock off work at 5pm, but I'd have to wait for my dad to finish work since he was the head of an entire department so he'd end up staying a bit later. Every day I'd bring a book with me and sit in this little foyer area between his department and the department where I worked since it had the most comfortable chairs. I must have been 22 years old when this happened because it was the penultimate summer that I worked there. I had just had my hair cut short for the first time in my life and I'd had it dyed red as well. I was sitting on these couches reading when all of a sudden this guy approaches me, Leon. Leon tells me that he works in my dad's department and he thought he'd come introduce himself. This is a pretty common occurrence for me and I was aware of this guy. 
He was young and decent looking, so a few of the women in my department had a crush on him. I was dating someone at the time though and I had never actually seen him in person, but I could see what they saw in him. We got to chatting and he mentioned that I'd changed my hair, so I told him about cutting it short and he cut me off mid-sentence. And this is where it started to get weird. He says, No, first it was brown and you didn't have a fringe. Then you went through that phase of curling it. Then you put the fringe in it and dyed it red. After that you dyed it purple. And now you had it cut short and dyed it back to red. This guy I'd just met was describing over two years worth of hairstyle changes that I'd had. I felt creeped out, but he seemed like a nice enough guy and... I guess I had worked at the company throughout the entire time, so it was reasonable to assume that he'd noticed me before. And that should have been the first red flag. He asked me if I had Facebook, and I told him that I did, so he said that he would add me. That seemed pretty normal, but then, after he'd sent the friend request, he asked me to get my phone out so he could watch me accept the friend request. I'm British, and it's therefore impossible for me to be impolite, so... I got my phone out and showed him that I had accepted it. I thought that might calm him down. Bear in mind, he wasn't a bad-looking guy, so I felt a bit flattered at this point that he was so keen on me. That sense of flattery dissolved real fast. After the Facebook thing, he kept asking me if I had MSN, and I told him that I didn't. I swear throughout this conversation, he asked me if I had MSN about four times. Then the final time he asked, he was like, Please... Can you get MSN messengers so we can chat after work? It was like he had something really urgent he wanted to tell me, but I had only just met this person. I kind of laughed and said how I hadn't used MSN since I was a teenager without necessarily rejecting him. Then he said something like, Well, if you don't have MSN, then you have Skype? This seemed like the perfect opportunity to bring up my boyfriend, who was a foreign student and went back to his home country during the summer. He was the only person I spoke to on Skype. I said to Leon how I didn't have my own Skype account, but I used my dad's Skype account to talk to my boyfriend. I really thought this might ward him off. I was wrong. Without missing a beat, he said, Can you just, please, just get your own Skype account so we can video chat after work? He said it like I somehow was inconveniencing him. Like this was something we'd agreed to do months ago or something. I had no idea how to react, so I just sort of smiled and laughed. Thank the heavens, someone from my dad's department walked past at that moment and was like, Leon, aren't you meant to be at your desk? He scurried off pretty quick after that, but not before reminding me to get my own Skype account and send him the details. I told my dad about the whole exchange in the car ride home, but all he said was that Leon was very friendly and that a lot of women in his department liked him, so... Maybe I just misunderstood the situation. I thought he was probably right, so I tried to not let it bother me. Later that evening, however, I was on my computer doing university work when a message popped up on my Facebook. It was Leon. All the message said was, We like the same movies. I don't know what it was, but something about this message freaked me out so much. I decided not to respond and logged off Facebook, hoping that he wouldn't notice I had been online. The next day after work, I was sat in my usual spot when Leon comes over to me. His face was like thunder. At first, I thought he was just having a bad day and was walking through the hallway, but my heart dropped when I realized he was walking directly towards me. Why didn't she respond to my Facebook message? I was stunned. How was I supposed to respond to that? Who says stuff like that in real life? Lucky for me, I didn't have an opportunity to respond because... He started off on this tirade. I'm not even kidding. He started listing all of the movies we had in common and that he had seen on my Facebook profile. Batman the Dark Knight, Watchmen, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Fight Club. I just sat there watching him reel off all of these film titles. Once he was finished, all he said was, It's okay. I forgive you. And then walked off back to his department. Over the next couple of weeks, he came and found me in my spot every day and talked at me from the moment I sat down to the moment my dad came to get me. I don't remember many of the other exchanges, but 
I do remember distinctly one day pretending to pick my nose when I saw him coming to see if it would put him off. It didn't. It got to the point where I'd get so stressed out after work that I'd go and hide in the toilets for as long as I could, but the women I worked with started to notice and think I was weird. Eventually, I broached the subject with my dad and he gave me his car keys after my shift so that I could go hide out in his car rather than in the building. So I'm camped out in his car and I'm still feeling quite tense, but after about 20 minutes, I start to feel at ease. Surely he won't come looking for me out here. Wrong. I looked over at the main entrance and my heart drops. He is coming out of the door and he's scrutinizing all of the cars. I sank down as far as possible into my seat, but I wasn't fast enough and he saw me. He comes rushing off and starts tapping on the glass. So I open the door and ask him what's up. I didn't see you in your usual spot. But uh, luckily the doorman told me he saw you come out here. Why are you in your dad's car? Again, what are you supposed to say to that? I told him I'd had a headache, so I'd come out to the car to take some paracetamol and see if I could get some sleep. At least he respected that because he told me to feel better and left me alone. I breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that I was only going to be working there for a few more days before I had to go back to university. I told my dad about the car incident and he gave Leon a talking to the next day. Leon would still come find me in the foyer, but he'd only talk to me for a few minutes and passing before leaving me alone, and it was a big relief. On my last day at work there, I was fully expecting him to do something crazy, but he didn't even come to chat with me that day. I left the office and thought that I would never see him again. I found out he was fired not long after I left the company that year because he kept coming into work late and then spent most of his time at work chatting with his co-workers and me, apparently. Fast forward to January of 2014, and I was preparing to move to China for a position teaching English. I had graduated from university and I was working at the same company, but this time in a semi-permanent capacity. It was my last day of work, so I received quite a few gifts and some fuss from my co-workers. It was about 10 a.m. when, who should I see, walk through the door but Leon. He had been hired as a temp to do the job that I had done for so many years. As soon as he walked through the door, he saw me and this flash of recognition crossed his face. I wanted to slide under my desk and die. He came walking over to me and was all smiles, asking about how I was and what I was still doing at the company. It was at this point that one of my coworkers mentioned how I was off to China soon. Leon seized on that and started talking about his friend who was also interested in TFL. His interest seemed genuine so I got to talking about how I got my TFL qualification, who I got it through, what company I was going to be working for out in China, etc. We chatted for about 20 minutes and he wrote down some details for his friend and went off to work. At the end of the day I was packing all my stuff to leave and a few of my co-workers were coming over to say their goodbyes. Don't get me wrong, the Leon incident aside, I had a wonderful time working at that company and I made a lot of great friends. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Leon approaching, but I think, what's the harm? He says goodbye and wishes me luck on my new adventure. Then, as I'm literally walking out the door of the department, I hear him call out, See you in China. For the first two weeks of my teacher training over there, I was like a hawk keeping a constant lookout for this guy. He never did follow me out to China, but it still remains one of the creepiest encounters of my life. This happened about four years ago. I was 20 at the time. The first time I met the guy who would become my grocery store stalker, he was standing outside the store collecting money for the Salvation Army Christmas time donations. I'm a fairly friendly person, so I like to say hi to people who work at places I frequent to be nice. This guy was a kid around my age, very tall, with a mild resemblance to Lurch from the Adams family, dark circles under dark eyes, short black hair, and kind of vacant look in his eyes as well. I chatted with him for maybe two minutes, just idle chit-chat about the weather and whatnot, 
nothing particularly memorable or interesting, and then waved goodbye and went home. Little did I know that single moment would be the start of something that would have me genuinely afraid. About four or five months passed, and I hadn't seen him again. Then one day, as I was grocery shopping with a friend, when, as we were chatting, she suddenly got really quiet and kind of recoiled backwards, looking behind me. I turned around to see this guy, who had to be at least six foot four, towering over me not eight inches from my body. He said hi, and told me he remembered me from that December I had talked to him, and then asked for my number. I, being young and never having experienced this type of interaction before, told him I didn't have my number memorized, but that I would write his down and text him later. I kind of half waved my phone at him, pointing out my at the time boyfriend whose picture was my wallpaper, making a point to say, oh look, that's my boyfriend, to the guy, hoping he would clue in, but no luck. He told me his number, which immediately upon getting, I blocked without letting him get my phone number. However, what made my blood run cold was what he said after I put my phone away. He leaned in real close, and in a low voice he told me, Whatever I text you is for your eyes only. At this point, I started to feel genuinely uncomfortable. I responded, Yeah, sure. Um... Nice talking to you, but we gotta get back to shopping. And I grabbed my friend and dragged her off, shooting a panicked look at her and asking why she didn't bail me out. Apparently he scared her too with his getting so close to me and she didn't know what to do. I want to make it clear, I'm not exactly a small girl, I'm 5'8 and solidly built. I can certainly handle myself and I very rarely feel intimidated or small in the presence of anyone, male or female but this guy made me feel tiny and scared. In the months that would follow, he would make me feel truly frightened. I had hoped that creepy interaction would be the last time I saw him, but that was unfortunately not the case. After that initial meeting with him saying that creepy thing about his text being from my eyes only, it seemed like I would run into him every single time I got to that store. No matter what checkout lane I was in, he always seemed to appear at the end of it when I was finished shopping, and every time I was in the store I would notice him out of the corner of my eye, watching me, no matter what area I was in. One time I even caught him following me out to my car. At that point I got scared and decided to say something to the managers. After letting the managers know what was going on, they assured me that they would tell him to not talk to me. After that, he wouldn't speak to me but I would continue to see him following me around the store at a distance every time I went up there. It got so bad and I felt so frightened that I started to be afraid to go to the store at all. But I'm one of those stubborn people who refuses to be intimidated by someone to the point I'll stop doing something. I had hoped that maybe it was a coincidence that he was following me. After all, it was a big store and maybe he just had things to do that just so happened to be in the areas that I was shopping in, so I started to pay close attention to my surroundings. Once I started paying really close attention, I realized that every single time I was up there, I would constantly notice him in the areas of the store I was in. During my last encounter with him, I went up to the store to grab just two or three items I needed for dinner that night, and I first saw him standing outside the store when I got there. And with his back to me, I quickly ran inside, hoping he didn't see me. Unfortunately, a few minutes later, I saw him at the very back of the store, and items in hand, I immediately made a beeline towards the front. As soon as I got near the checkout, I ducked behind one of the shelf displays and watched carefully at the front of the store to see if the creeper would appear, and he did. I watched as he looked up and down the checkout, and when he didn't see me there, I saw him step outside. At this point, I quickly ran into the nearest open cashier, rang up my items, and stuck my head out the door to look for him. I didn't see him there immediately, so I started trying to make my way back to where I was parked. I had parked a ways away, near the side of the store where a bunch of other small stores and restaurants were lined up, and as I was walking towards my car, I realized I saw him standing by the entrance that I had first entered the store through and ducked behind a pillar immediately, hoping he didn't see me. I watched carefully from behind the pillar, and as he scanned the parking lot, he obviously couldn't find me. After a minute or two, he started walking out towards the direction of the parking lot in front of the store, and 
so I took that opportunity to make a run for it to my car as soon as he was far enough away that I felt safe. As soon as I got into my car, I locked the doors, and to my horror when I looked up, he was standing there about 15 feet away from my car with a shopping cart in front of him. I knew that he followed me. He knew I knew. I fully believed he had chased after me, and when I made it to my car, he grabbed the nearest cart to make it look like he was collecting them from the parking lot, and I just remember feeling absolutely terrified at that moment. I went home and immediately told my grandfather what had happened. I began crying and shaking, and my grandfather told me to get in the car, and we were going to settle this. He and I drove up to the store in his car, and he walked me into the store and demanded we speak with the managers immediately, both of them. When the managers arrived at customer service, he asked me to tell them what had been happening and demanded that they ensure he left me alone or that he would involve police. The managers swore up and down that they would take care of it. As far as I know, he wasn't fired immediately because my friend who first encountered him with me when this whole thing began told me that she would see him from time to time when she was there by herself, but that any time I went with her, she would never see him. I fully believe he knew whenever I was there, only this time instead of stalking me, he would avoid me. Eventually everyone who knew the situation stopped seeing him there, so I think he may have gotten fired and moved on from that store. Either way, I haven't had any issues since, but I never in my life felt so afraid of another human being as I did that day seeing him make eye contact with me in the parking lot as I locked my car doors. It still creeps me out to think he was watching me so closely every time I entered the store, and that he could so easily avoid or follow me whenever he wanted. A few years ago, I was renting an apartment with a girl I worked with. Our apartment complex was one of those with multiple buildings that all have two units on each side. One upstairs, one downstairs with four total apartments per building, with garages in the center that all looked like they were copies of each other, and we lived in the top right unit. We worked as managers at a movie theater, so our schedules usually alternated, so we weren't usually home and awake at the same time. I woke up one Saturday night at around 2am to the sound of voices in our living room. My roommates had closed at work that night, and... Closers almost never leave before 1am, so I thought she might have come home and decided to watch some TV before going to bed. After listening for a minute, I realized the voices were moving around and the volume fluctuated too much to be on TV. It sounded like two men talking to each other and the only phrase I was able to hear was someone saying, They're not here, man! In a hushed but aggressive tone, which is never a good thing. I knew that my roommate wouldn't have people over so late without at least sending me a text, and we had a team building event the next day at 8am so she wouldn't have anyone over when we had to be up so early. I knew whoever it was was not supposed to be in my apartment. I grabbed my phone and rolled over onto my stomach so I could hide the glow from my phone under my pillow in case whoever was out there decided to open my door and look in. I turned my ringer off and dialed 911. I gave them my address and told them that I could hear people in my living room. The dispatcher said that there was a car in the area and they were less than two minutes away. She said they found the apartment and the door was wide open and that I needed to go outside and that police were waiting just outside. I was terrified to go outside because I didn't know if these guys were still in my home, so I snuck out of my bedroom and then moved as quickly and quietly as I could through the living room and out the front door. The officers met me at the bottom of our stairs and asked if anyone else should be in the apartment before they went in. I said that my roommate should be the only other person home and that she would be in her bedroom. They came back a minute later and said, So the two guys asleep on your couch shouldn't be there? I said they absolutely shouldn't be there. Police woke up my roommate and brought her outside and we sat in one of the police cars while they handled the guys inside. They were escorted out without incident and when the officers asked if we wanted to press charges, we said 100% yes. After they were taken away, we went back inside and one officer came up with us and said that one of the men thought he lost his phone. He looked around and didn't find it, but 
She did point out that there was a big crack in our door frame where they might have tried to force their way in. My roommate notified our landlord about what had happened so that they could repair the door frame. The landlord replied by forwarding an email they had received from another tenant. This tenant apparently lived in the building next to ours and he was also in the top right unit. He had two friends visiting from out of town for the weekend and they had all gone out drinking and ended up back at his apartment. At some point, these guys woke up and decided that they wanted to go back to sleep at their hotel instead of crashing at his place. They left his apartment to call a cab, but when they couldn't find one, they decided to go back to his apartment. Luckily, this neighbor took full responsibility and paid to have our door frame replaced, but we didn't renew our lease after that. I developed severe anxiety regarding having people break into my home that lasted a long time. It's been improving through anxiety medication and the addition of a home alarm in the form of a 90-pound pit bull mix. A month or so after this incident, I received an envelope in the mail that contained two letters. They were very non-apologetic apology letters from both men just talking about how they had learned the problem with excess drinking and that they were going to make sure they didn't do anything like that again and blah blah blah. The crazy thing is, we found out that these guys were med students, so I shudder to think about one of these guys being my doctor someday. I never saw their faces, so I'll never know for sure if the man taking care of my physical health one day might be one of the men who caused so much harm to my mental health. This was about an hour ago. It's not nearly as bad as some of them, but it still has me shaken up. It was roughly 9.30pm, a Tuesday night. Nothing ever happens on Tuesdays. I went downstairs to get my dog so she can sleep in my bed with me. I said goodnight to my parents, got my meds, and got a glass of water. I set the cup down and turned the lights off, totally forgetting about the glass of water. I placed my dog on my bed, turned on my laptop, and I realized I left my water downstairs. I went back down to get it and I saw a car pull up through my kitchen window. I thought it was my oldest sister, but she was staying at a friend's house. I looked out and it was a small compact car with what I could see were two men inside. I had no clue who they were, so I began to stress out. I tried to get a closer look, making sure I couldn't be spotted. I'm a very small guy, 5'5 five five and incredibly weak, a 14-year-old kid can't take on two tall and buff-looking men. I saw something in the back of the car but couldn't quite make out what it was. I snapped myself out of it and grabbed my water. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw one of them get out and walk towards my house. I lost it at that point and ran to my parents' room. I asked, who's outside? My dad was confused and said, is it your sister? I shook my head, told him that we didn't know them they weren't our neighbors, plus their houses are walking distance. There's no reason that they need a car. He got up and my mom followed. They looked out the front door and saw a tall man in a gray Under Armour hoodie walking up, carrying something. My dad instantly went out there and freaked the guy out. My mom rushed me upstairs and had her phone at the ready. I went to my room still holding my water and I have no clue what happened or what those two guys wanted. I'm just so thankful that my dad was there to freak them out before they did something terrible. This happened about 10 years ago while I was in my last year of college. My friend and I were living in a two-bedroom apartment in a very safe and slightly upscale part of town. To give you an image of us, at the time, I was about 210 pounds, 5'7", and fairly capable of handling myself as I had been an athlete for a large portion of my life, but had succumbed to a food addiction. My roommate was 5'3", 115 pounds, and had never lifted weights in her life. One day, I was cooking up something for dinner, and my roommate came in and went to her room. We weren't lovey-dovey kind of roommates, so it wasn't unusual for us to not make small talk every time we saw each other. I went on cooking and about five minutes later there was a knock on the door. I went around the island and opened the door expecting a delivery person. Instead I was gripped with this intense visceral sense of unease. 
It wrapped around my body like a vice and every hair on my body stood up. There was a totally normal looking guy standing there, medium height, light skin, brown hair wearing a ball cap, casual sweater and pants. To this day I couldn't identify him from a lineup but I just recall he looked totally unremarkable. However, I never in my life felt such a sense of foreboding. My heart was beating out of my chest. I didn't even say a word, I just stared at him, vaguely wondering if I should shut the door in his face. He stared at me for a few moments and turned and walked away, his dog following behind him. I had been so fixated on this guy, I hadn't even realized that he had been holding a dog leash attached to a sweet looking golden retriever. My anxiety abated and I decided I had been overreacting despite never having that particular feeling before. I had grown up as a tomboy had mostly guy friends growing up, was in a hugely male-dominated career and degree, computer science and IT, and played a male-dominated sport most of my life, golf. I was not and have never been in the least bit afraid of men. About 30 minutes later, my roommate came out and asked me who was at the door and I said, uh, some random guy, wrong apartment apparently. She looked at me frowning and asked, did he have a dog? I replied in the affirmative, he had a dog. She told me that some guy with a dog had tried to chat her up at the mailboxes on the other side of the complex, but she had ignored him and gotten back in her car to come here. She's positive he couldn't have seen her come into the apartment because, one, he would have had to run at super speed to catch up to her. Two, our apartment faces away from the section where the mailboxes are. And three, there are at least four buildings obscuring line of sight to our building. What that means is, he scoured the parking lots for her car, and when he saw her car parked in front of our apartment building, he had likely knocked on each door. There are two on each floor, four floors total, to try and find her. Our suspicions were confirmed the next day when there was a phone number, no name, under her windshield. I have no idea if she ever reported the incident, but... I was on edge for a good month afterward because I was worried he might keep an eye out for her. I don't know why he turned around and left. Maybe he thought he had the wrong apartment or maybe he assumed she lived alone and didn't want to confront someone else. Maybe as much as my roommate's tiny size enticed him, my larger size made him think twice about doing anything. To this day, I've only ever gotten that sensation one other time while I was out with my boyfriend at a bar about a year ago. A guy who wasn't even looking at me made me feel super uneasy and the same tension had wound through my body. Dude looked completely ordinary there as well, but my instincts were just lashing back at him. Considering the incident with the first guy, I knew to trust my instincts and asked to go to another bar. Maybe I have a sixth sense for crazy people, but I decided I would never question my subconscious instincts again. I hope to never experience that sensation in the future and I'm curious if anyone else has had the same sort of subconscious reaction to another human being. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. And if you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r slash let's read official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join a live stream to catch an invite to my Discord. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. And check out the Let's Read podcast, where you can hear all these stories in long compilation form and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends. And remember, I think we're going to be friends. <laughs>